Hello everyone and welcome to a new tutorial video on the Future Programmer YouTube channel. Today, we will be making a beginner Python project, the game Tic-Tac-Toe. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Before we go ahead and get started writing our code, let's first think about how we want to approach this program. As you probably know, Tic-Tac-Toe is a two-player game played on a board of three rows and three columns. So we have a total of nine smaller squares. Players will take turns to put either X's or O's on each of these grids. And the first person to complete a line, so either a row, a column, or one of the diagonals, will win the game. So how can we represent a board like this in Python? Well, you may think to use a list and that would be a very good approach. So let's create a board variable, which is equal to a list. Now your first thought might be to create a list with nine items since we have a total of nine of these small, um, small squares. The approach that I'm going to go with is a two dimensional list. So our list is going to store three smaller lists inside of it. So it looks like this. Each of these smaller lists is going to represent a row in our grid. So we have this row, this row, and this row. So each of these is going to contain three elements. So we have this element, this element, this element, which we'll put inside of our smaller lists right here. For now, since we have nothing on the board, we can just use spaces. So space, space, space. Let me duplicate these. And now we have a tic-tac-toe board stored inside of our variable board. Printing out board, we can actually see a list printed out, which doesn't really look like a tic-tac-toe board. So let's create a custom function to print out tic-tac-toe boards. So let's print out, or let's create a function called print board, which takes one parameter board. And since this code doesn't really involve much logic, I'm going to copy this function's body inside of our program. So here we have a total of five print statements. We can see the use of the F string here to concatenate the items inside of our board variable with some vertical lines. And essentially what's happening here is this is printing out the first row. So we're printing out the first element. So board zero is accessing this list, this smaller list here. And board zero, zero is accessing this element right here. So we're printing out this element right here, and then this element right here, and then we're printing out this element right here. And same thing with the second and the third rows. And here we just have some dashes just to add to our tic-tac-toe board. So if I call the print board function on our variable board, we'll see a tic-tac-toe board printed out. Right now we have nothing in it. If I just add, let's say, I put this to be X and this to be, let's say, O, this to be X. We'll see we have a tic-tac-toe board printed out that looks like this. So perfect. Now we have a way to print out our board. Let's reset these values to empty strings and think about how we can create the actual user interaction between two human players playing this game. Since this game is going to be played continuously, so one person is going to put this, the second person is going to put this, and then the first person is going to put this. So it's a continuous process that will keep going until either someone has won or all of these, uh, all of these squares have been filled up. So we need something like a while loop in this case. So let's create a while loop. So while a certain condition is true, we will continue to ask the players for their choices of where they want to put their marks and check if someone has won and so on. So the first condition is we want to check if someone has won. So let's create a variable called one, which is initially set to be false. So one is false. And while nobody won, we want to continue. And if someone did win, we do not want to continue and the while loop will exit. And the second condition that we want is to check if there is still an empty spot in our board. And we can tackle this problem using a variable called turns. 
So we'll initially set this to be nine. So a total of nine turns because we have nine empty spots at the beginning of our game. And then in our while loop, we will continue to subtract from our turns variable. So our while not one and turns is greater than zero. Then we will continue to play this game. The first thing that we need to do is to determine what is the mark of the player that is playing this turn. So let's check if turns modulus two is equal to one, let's just say mark is equal to X. Else mark is equal to O, not I, O. So we're checking if the turns variable is an odd number, mark is gonna be X. If it's an even number, we'll just assign O to the mark variable. Pretty simple. So we're alternating between the X player and the O player. And then let's just print out our board and then ask the player for their input. So let's create a variable called user input, which is equal to input. And then let's just say player mark. What is your choice? Do you want to, uh, you know, which, which spot do you want to choose on the board? Now you can have your player enter something like zero, zero, and then you will select this grid right here. And then let's say one, two, and then you will select this square right here. The approach I'm going to go with is actually a little bit difficult on the coding sides, but a lot more easier for players to enter their choices. So we want to map some numbers here to the indexes. So if I just select all of these, so let me just show you what I mean. So let's fill these up with numbers. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. If the player enters one, then we know that the player wants to select this square right here. If they enter eight, we know they're selecting this one right here. And we just need to convert these numbers into indexes that Python understands and can use. So let's create a variable. Let's call this index, or sorry, it will be input to index. This is going to be a dictionary which is going to have keys, which are the numbers that we want to have the user inputs. So one is going to map to zero, zero. So if the user enters one, we want to select the square with index zero, and then zero again. Same thing with two. So two is going to be zero, one, and three is going to be zero, two, Etc. So I'm going to just copy the second and third lines here onto our program. And we can see four corresponds to one zero, etc. So with this variable input to index, we can convert our user input to rows and columns. So let's create a variable called row and a variable called column. And row column is going to be, let's see, it'll be input to index. And then we want to pass in user input. So we're using this as the key to our dictionary. So if the player entered one, we're going up to this dictionary and checking, okay, what is the value that is corresponded to the key of one? And we get zero, zero. So row is going to be zero and column is going to be zero. So with these two values, now we can access the board. So let's just do board is board on um, row column is equal to the player's mark. Now let's print this out or let's run this program. We see our board printed out player X. So if I enter one, we'll see that the top left hand corner, this square right here has been occupied by the mark X. Now we see that player X is going again. And then that is because right now we don't have the subtraction from the turns variable. So turns is always gonna be nine and the mark is always going to be X. So let's just add in, uh, let's add in turns is one less than it was before this statement. So turns minus equals zero, uh, minus equals one. Let's try one and let's try two. Let's try three and you'll see that this will work. A problem that we have right now though, is if I enter one again, we'll see that the first square has been changed from X to O. And we don't want to do that because once a square has been occupied, you don't want the other player 
putting another item in that square again. So we want to check if that square has been occupied before putting the mark onto that square. So let's put an if statement here. If board row column is equal to an empty string or a space, then we will modify that square to be the current player's mark. So we're checking if that square is empty, then we will change that to the current player's mark. And we'll also move this up here so we don't modify the turns variable if it's not a valid move. So else, if this is not a valid square for the player playing right now, we want to print out square already occupied. Please try again. Or something like that. And so now if I run this program, one, if player O tries to get one again, you will see that we have square already occupied. Please try again. So perfect. Now we have everything working. We can actually, let's, let's just take a look at our output again. If I just put one, two, three, we can see that this is pretty crowded. Our output right now is just, it's kind of just keeps going. So we can use Python to clear the terminal every time before we print out the board every time. So let's import a module, the OS module, which is built into Python. You don't have to do any extra installation. And then before we print out the board every time, let's just call the os.system function. And I'm going to pass in the string CLS, which as you can see on Windows, if I just do something like, let's say dir, and then if I press CLS, it will clear the screen. Now on other operating systems, you may have to use the clear command instead, but on Windows, it is CLS. So now if I run this program, we see it's not recognized. That's because I did not save this program after I changed it back to CLS. So player X, if I enter one, you can see that we only see the current state of the board instead of all the previous ones as well. So let's try five six if i try one again we don't actually see any output and that's because immediately after we print this out we're going to clear the screen so we want to let's wait a little bit here so we can use the time module to do that so import time so after we print out square already occupied please try again let's do time dot sleep one so we're going to sleep for one second we're going to pause the program's execution for one second before we go on to clear the screen and then go on in the loop again. And we see the message printed out. The last thing that we need to do is to determine if there has been a winner in our game, because right now our game just keeps going on and on and on without ever stopping until the entire board has been occupied. So let's create a function to check if the board has been won by one of the players. So let's create a function called to get winner which takes board as input. So this function is going to return X, O, or none. So if it returns X or O, that means that that player has won the game. If it returns none, it means that the board is in a state where neither of the player has won the game yet. So what we can do is we can check. Now you can match all of these, you know, you can check if this is equal to this and equal to this, then whoever is on that row has won. And then check if this is equal to this, which is equal to this, then someone has won, and etc. for the rows, for the columns, for the diagonals. The approach that I will be using is using some for loops. So for i in range three, I'll be explaining this in more details in a second. So if board i zero is equal to board i one, which is equal to board i2, and then if board i0 is not equal to space, then we'll return board i0. So what's happening here is we're iterating through the three rows of our board. So we have a i, which is the, we have a variable called i, which is going through 0, 1, and 2, which are the three rows of our board. If at each row, the first item, the first column, I guess the first value of that row is equal to the second item 
of that row. And both of these are equal to the third item of that row. Then we have a match. But wait, we have to check, is someone actually occupying that row? Because it can be all spaces. So we're checking if the first item is not equal to space, then we know that in turn, these two are also not empty. So that means that the player actually won the entire game. So we have a, an entire line completed by a player. So that's checking for the three rows of our board. We can do the same thing for our columns. So I'm just going to copy this code over here. So for i in range three, so here what, we're changed, what we have changed is instead of board i zero, we're putting in board zero i, we're flipping the two indices. So rows and columns, we're flipping that. And then the same for here and for here, just flipping the zero and i in these two places. Lastly, we want to check the diagonal lines. So this is a little bit more tedious. Same thing, I'm gonna copy the code over. And you can see if I zoom out a little bit more, we have if board zero zero, the upper left hand corner is equal to the middle, which is equal to the lower right hand corner. So that's the line that you'll get this line right here. Or if board zero two, the upper right hand corner is equal to the middle spot, which is equal to the lower left hand corner, which is this diagonal right here, then we'll return board one one the middle item if that is not equal to space so now we have a function that returns who has won the game but if nobody has won the game by default python functions will return the value none so there's like an invisible return none statement we don't need it but by default that is what's going to happen implicitly so we can check here after someone has made their move on the board we can check if get winner board. If this is not none, that means someone has won. So if this is not none, it means that this is either X or O. So one of them has won the game. Let's print board. And then let's just set one to be true so we can break out of the while loop and print out congratulations. Player not mark, it would be get winner board so whoever has that winner status and then you won like this let's actually add os.system again here so os.system cls or clear depending on your operating system now we have a complete tic-tac-toe program running this code we see our board printed out so let's try one let's try two let's try three and if i put in let's say five and let's say player X made a wrong move, they put in nine, and then player O grabbed spot eight. We see that congratulations, player O, you have won. So everything is working. This is in 60 lines, a completely working tic-tac-toe program that is between two human players. Now there's, a, there's still a lot of things that you can improve and explore in this program. You can, for example, right now, our program is going to run once. It's gonna have one round of tic-tac-toe. If you want more, you can pack this into a function and then put a while loop around that. Or if you want to have something more exciting like a player, a human player playing against a computer, well, you can certainly do that as well. Right now we're just playing against another human. So a human versus another human. Or something else you can do is to change the input to index, say to another format. So you can change it to, I don't know, Q-W-E-A-S-D-Z-X-C, which is the left hand of the letters on your keyboard, or maybe your numpad, so 789456123, something like that. So there's certainly a lot of things you can change, but I hope this video has taught you a little bit of how to use functions to dimensional lists, also the os.system function and the time.sleep functions as well. And that's it for this tic-tac-toe project tutorial on the Future Programmer YouTube channel. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something about Python. If you would like to learn more about programming, please consider subscribing down below. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section down below as well. With that said, thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you in more videos in the future.